we didn't shower all week and neither did the drill sergeants. They were there with us. So we get back from this and that's when we're doing it. And our, uh, our drill sergeant takes off his boot, peels off his sock and literally freaking right into the, right into the toilet bowl, all the sweat. And yep, we all drank it. Dude, that's called a shitty. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Social Drinkers podcast, where we talk about the art, science, and industry of drinking. We're back on another thirsty Thursday, and just like every week, we've got Kate Ray and myself, Mitch, ready to tackle this week's drinking news. What's going on, guys? <laughs> you literally sound like you started a radio show. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be like. That's what isn't that what podcasts are? They're they're new age radio. Totally. You're not here going to be a uh, a new radio personality. <laughs> yeah, Stolman. yeah, top twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Love you it. idiots. I've got a little icebreaker question for everyone. We're going to kick it to Ray first. On top of the normal weekly question of what are you drinking this week? Describe yourself as a drinker to the audience. That's easy, Mitch. Um, I would <laughs> describe myself as a college kid. Ah. Um, <laughs> I get after it. You know, I... <laughs> That's what we do. It's what we're best at. And in that fashion, today I am drinking Fanta and vodka. <laughs> Not exactly a mixologist over here. But yes. I'll tell you what, it's killer if you haven't tried it. So give it a go. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Fanta and vodka. It probably is really good. I, I got to be honest. Are, are you too young for the movie Old School or have you ever seen it? Oh, I've seen it. You're like yeah, everybody's the... seen old school. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> you're pretty young, so it's like Frank the Tank. You know, that's that's you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going streaking through campus. I <laughs> uh, love it, Kate. What about you? Describe yourself as a drinker and tell everyone what it is that you're sipping on this week. Okay, well, mine I feel like is the complete opposite of Ray's answer. I am the type of drinker that will not drink a vodka fanta i have to have something nice if i'm going to actually like have a drink i have to have like a craft cocktail or a really nice glass of wine or a high-end bourbon that you just drink neat or on the rocks or something like that so i and i also like my environment to be very peaceful and fun and not like a crazy club so like my perfect night of drinking I would say would be sitting next to the fire having a really nice cocktail listening to some music with a really good candle lit and just talking to like a few people I gotta be honest that is a spot-on description of who you are as a drinker for those of you that don't know we we're married so you see what i have to deal with sitting by a fire drinking <laughs> don julio 1942 no <laughs> hey, key lie let's, let's calm down lie. because that sounds fantastic all right it does. It, does. <laughs> it does kate what are you what are you drinking this week okay so i have a glass of white wine and i'm not gonna lie this is just a wine that was left over in our fridge. I actually have the bottle here. It is a Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc New Zealand white. And I don't know how old this is. It tastes pretty good. And it's been in the fridge for a while. Um, So I finished, I figured I would finish off the bottle for this podcast. But one little tip that I'll give you that my uncle who loves wine shared with us is that you can never go wrong with the New Zealand white. So if you're ever at the grocery store looking for a glass of wine or a bottle of wine, New Zealand makes really good white wine. Look at that. Kate's already dropping the knowledge bombs on everybody. That's why you show up here to the Social Drinkers podcast. Thank you, Kate Lynn. What about you, Mitch? What do you got uh what do you got going on over there? Well, Ray, I described myself similarly to Kate as a drinker. However, 
my description of myself would be the tamed beast. Because I, think I that's too, accurate. I too was once a rager in the college scene at Ohio University. Many a night had a lot of fun. Now I'm much more happy with sitting by the fire with a nice glass of bourbon or a Manhattan. That's my drink. You're going to learn that really quickly. I'm not drinking one tonight, which I'll explain what I am drinking, but Manhattans, that's where it's at for me. Tonight, though, I'm going with Great Lakes. You probably can't see it. Ohio City Oatmeal Stout. And I got to say, it's pretty good. I've wanted to buy this beer for a little while. I'm a big fan of Great Lakes Brewing. We're here in the Cleveland area, so big beer around here. But I'm I'm a stout fan, and I'm especially a coffee or oatmeal stout fan. And this one, it's good. I like it. I know we literally just said that we lived in Nashville, but we now live in Cleveland. We used to live in Nashville, and I still follow a bunch of people from Nashville. And this girl posted this company on her Instagram story, and I typically don't get intrigued with influencers PR packages, but this in particular company I was super interested in because it's a candle company and they pour their candles into whiskey glasses, like whiskey rocks glasses. And I checked out the company. They're called Ranger Station. It was started in an old Ranger Station, hence the name, by a musician living in Nashville. And I guess just one day he had the idea to make a candle and put it in a whiskey glass. And what's really interesting is that they have paired their scents with cocktails that they've created. So when you receive the candle, it comes with a cocktail card that they've made specifically for that scent and they pair really well together. So you're the idea is like you drink the drink from the cocktail card that they sent while you light the candle. And it just creates this really nice experience of like smell and taste um, all together. Kind of like sitting by the fire and having a nice cocktail. Well, exactly. Like behind me, I lit a candle because, (laughs) you know, you have to have the whole vibe and aura going. If anyone knows me, they know I always have to play like jazz music and light a candle, you know, have a fire going. It's the whole experience. You're going to have an audience of really bougie people by by the end of this podcast era. You're going to have people that are following you just to get a vibe or find the fanciest alcohols. It's going to be uh, it's it's going to be impressive. We'll, we'll leave the sh- uh, the link to that website in the show notes, everybody, so you can go check out Ranger Station as well. They say scent has a big influence on taste, well, yeah. so. It could change Mm -hmm. the way that you're tasting that cocktail. Think about wine. I mean, a huge part of the wine tasting process is that uh, that sniff in that inhalation of the notes and everything. Same with bourbon and uh, and other liquors. You want to get that smell because I think it's some it's some crazy high percentage of taste is influenced by smell. I'm not going to throw a number out there because I don't want some freaking Karen coming after me telling me how it's not that. So, you know, I think we'll keep it a a high percentage. That can be relative. It can be subjective. I'm digging the Karen voice that you've got going on over there. That's, <laughs> it that's sounds really accurate. Something. It sounds like yeah. a freaking Karen, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. So what I've got going on this week, uh, and I think that you guys are really going to enjoy this because I happen to know that our family follows Formula One a little bit. <clears throat> and a little bit. Have you ever heard of the phrase um, doing a shoey? Doing a shoey. I've heard the phrase doing a shoey, but I don't know what it means. So you're going to have to explain. Yeah. Okay. Nope. So this originated actually in like 1800s Germany. Mm. And uh, it's literally taking a drink and pouring it into your shoe and drinking the drink out of your shoe. Well, oh, it's like a yeah, boot. Yeah, I've heard that. A boot. A boot. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Now, it's called a shoey in Australia. Ah. Mm. And the reason that this is coming on again, um, there is a V8 supercar driver named David Reynolds, right? And he did it after a win. And who followed this is someone that I know Kate has a crush on, Daniel <laughs> Ricardo. 
<laughs> I certainly everyone's, do. <laughs> everyone's favorite Formula One driver, right? He's the best. He has the best personality. There's no doubt about it. Well, he carried it on over into Formula One. And then after that, um, he was being interviewed by somebody after a race later on in the season after he did it. And that interviewer actually did a shoey out of Daniel Ricardo's shoe. And now oh. this is something that this is something that has been going on. It started off uh, that supercar driver did it in 2015. And this is of recent last year. Ooh. So and it's it's really caught on in Australia. But <laughs> I did think it was interesting because why why now? You know? That's Media. interesting. Well, are they posting it online? Like, is he posting it on social media or is it just like the media hype around F1 probably? Media hype. And I mean, people, people see their fellow Australians doing a shoey and, you know, they want to, they want to participate. Dude, can you imagine taking off your sweaty shoe after a workout and drinking a beer out of it? No, I can you can, you've can. done a shoey? I've not done a shoey, but I have done, done a something. booty. <laughs> no, Hold I've on. done something equally as gross. <laughs> okay, oh, wait, okay. tell. What is it? So at the end of basic training, <laughs> oh, you God. have to go through, um, I can't remember exactly what they call it, and I'll probably catch flack for that. But um, essentially, they get an empty toilet, and they mix together a concoction of just disgusting things. That you have to drink and i vividly remember i'll never forget it uh we did a 10 mile ruck march and immediately following that um we didn't shower all week and neither did the drill sergeants they were there with us so we get back from this and that's when we're doing it and our uh our drill sergeant takes off his boot peels off his sock and literally freaking right into the right into the toilet bowl all the sweat and yep we all drank it dude that's called a shitty (laughs) (laughs) unbelievable it's not a shitty it's a shitty right out of the shitter (laughs) did you throw up did it taste okay did you what did it taste like so i'll be honest i don't know what was in there but it wasn't that bad (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't i mean i'll I'll say this I'll say this, I like, there was definitely like some pretty gross chunks of something in there that I'm not about, but I don't like chunks in my drinks personally, but it, otherwise it kind of tasted like fruit punch. Wait, I, don't know I have what a they sto- mixed it with. I have a story. I have another story about the punch. <laughs> I mean the chunks, not the punch. Oh, God. When, when, so Mitch and I met in college and we met before we turned 21. So we both like had our 21st birthdays together. And for Mitch's 21st birthday, his grandma gets him this bottle of Bailey's. And we, you know, just turned 21. We literally, like Ray was saying, we don't, we have drinking Fanta and vodka up to this point, you know. And so we're like, Sue, so fancy. We're going to have some Bailey's. And I think we made it with some apple cider. It was like in the fall. And we poured the Baileys and it was chunky. And we were like, <laughs> we, we were like, oh, it's probably just because we're mixing it with apple cider, you know, like knowing literally nothing. And we look, and do you remember how expired it was? Yes, I do. We, first of all, we drank it. We drank it. There the were bottle. literally chunks in this Baileys and Rather than saying, no, something's wrong with it. That's disgusting. No, we just drank it. It's probably because we're mixing it with apple cider. It was 2018. That expired in, when did it expire? No, it wasn't 2018. I'm sorry. It was 2015 and it expired in 2006. That's when it no, expired. We, yeah, we were not was, drinking that in 2015. Yeah, we were. That's when I turned 21, 2015. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. I'm yeah. old. 2015. <laughs> old. Yeah. See, <laughs> new rule for the pod. No mental math. That's that's, that's <laughs> what we got to do. But seriously, 2015. Expired. Expired in 2006. And we still drank it. And the best part, nobody got sick. That's what's crazy. 
That is crazy. wild. I mean, I can't imagine that you guys wouldn't have gotten sick from that. That's like drinking a gallon of expired milk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but anyway, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, you could do a shoey, you could do a shitty, or you could drink a nine-year-old bottle of Bailey's. But speaking of crazy drinkers, drinking stories, all this, did you guys see that Monster, Monster Energy is putting out an alcoholic beverage? I did. And Dude. so the first question I asked is, is it an energy drink? Like, so like is this full of caffeine? And I, I, I never got research. an answer on that. I did some research. All right. And I'm going to pull up my notes here so that I, I, so that I get this right. And basically what we're looking at is it is not an energy drink. Okay. It is illegal for an alcoholic beverage to have caffeine or any other am amphetamine in it. That wasn't always the case because my first thought was your first thought. I thought of Four Loco. Four Loco mm -hmm. used to have caffeine in it. Then a bunch of people started getting madly drunk, hungover, sick, dying after their excursions with the Four Loco, and they sued the company. Many, many lawsuits. I don't have the exact number, but I want to pull up my notes to figure out. I believe it was 2015. Don't quote me on that. I don't have the article pulled up, but I think in 2015, um, they made it illegal for Four Loco to contain caffeine. It still gets you madly hung over if you if you drink it. I've drank Not it. just hung over. <laughs> <laughs> madly yeah. drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, madly, madly drunk. But anyway, that I, I went into a little bit of a rabbit hole on the Four Loco thing to figure out, does this have caffeine in it? Because RBVs, Red Bull Vodkas, Mountain Dew and any sort of liquor, when you mix caffeine and alcohol, I mean, it is it is dangerous. Let's just say I've woken up in the sand trap on a golf course before after a caffeine and alcohol excursion. I've punched trees. I've done some bad things after caffeine and alcohol and you got to avoid that like the plague i uh i woke up on the lawn of blossom in the middle of a concert yeah it's not good and didn't even know how i got there yeah, apparently it, i bought a ticket it'll it'll happen to you. <laughs> it'll happen to you but so they're launching this drink called the beast unleashed and it's a six percent alcohol malt beverage of course it's a malt beverage all these Silly things are malt beverages. And um, it, it's not something that seems like it's new. So in 2022, Monster acquired Canarchy, which owns a bunch of breweries. Oscar Blues, Deep Ellum Breweries, like that. And they acquired it for $330 million. So when you look at that, it was an investment in the alcohol space. You think, hmm, probably buying for distribution, right? So that they can get the supply chain, right? They can have all their production in place. Um, and, and so it, it's really interesting. They, they launched in Arizona, California, Ohio, Florida, Iowa, and Colorado, and plan to be nationwide by the end of the year. So in Ohio, where we are, we can go grab this tasty malt drink. What do you guys say this weekend? I'm in. Well, <laughs> my question is, what's the flavor? Like, is uh, it a monster flavored drink or is it, do they have like, you know, the typical strawberry, kiwi, fruit punch, that kind of stuff, lemonade, or is it, or do you get that monster flavor? Well, I'm glad you asked, Caitlin, because I also did that in my research. You can get <laughs> Peach Perfect and Scary Berry as the first two iterations of flavor that are coming out. So I don't know a lot about Monster at all. Actually, I don't know anything about Monster except of, I know the logo. Are those Monster flavors? I feel like the appeal of a energy drink launching a alcohol drink is that you would have that Monster taste, that Red Bull taste with alcohol in it. Because isn't that why people drink energy drinks? Not to just get energy, obviously, but they like the taste of whatever energy drink that they're drinking. I'll say this. No, not in my experience. It is 100% about that caffeine. And but if you're going to decide between, it. if you're going to decide between Red Bull and Monster, aren't you going to go with the one that you think tastes better? 
Absolutely. Yeah. And in my personal opinion, Red Bull is trash compared to Monster. But Monster has a million flavors, and some of them are pretty good. I can sit there and enjoy them. Uh, Red Bull, it's got other flavors, but I don't think any of them are any good. Interesting. Mm. I'm not an energy drink guy. I've I've had them before, but I don't know anything about them, the flavors they come in. But I do remember uh, Monster Rehab as a hangover cure-ish. I would uh, I would go get that Arnold Palmer Monster Rehab after a nice hard bender and, and try to take off the headache with one of those. For for those of you listening, I am no longer a degenerate like this. I'm telling stories like I'm the Wolf of Wall Street or something, and it's just not true. I it you know I used to be crazy, but uh, I no longer consume Monster Rehab. If if that gives you any clue as to the life I now live, like I said, I'm a tamed beast. Well, what I'm is Monster sure Rehab? Still- yeah, I'm not even sure they still sell Monster Rehab. <laughs> Slap! <laughs> Jim Gaffigan, if you don't understand that joke or if you're listening to this and not watching it, I just did a slapping motion. He said every now and then your age slaps you in the face, and that's what just happened to me. They don't sell Monster Rehab anymore. I'm not even that old. I can't imagine how someone's like 50, how they feel all the time. I'm not positive about that, but I know that personally I've never seen him in the store. Well, you know what? Shut up, Ray. How about that? <laughs> All right, Kate, we are going to get home. we are going to get told our age a lot. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, we really are bringing a college kid into this <laughs> thing isn't probably the greatest idea. Twenty one year old kid and freaking teaching us the way of the world nowadays with Fanta and vodka. It's yeah, different man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it is Fanta and vodka. That's a good good college oh, mix right there, for sure. I would argue that alcohol hasn't changed that much. The people have. Agreed. I would agree with that. We can leave it there. This isn't a political yep. podcast. I agree with you there. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So kind of to that note, I absolutely love watching the Bon Appetit YouTube videos. They teach you so much. You know, as an adult, you want to figure out the, especially when you're like in your twenties, you're like, what can I buy? That's good. But that is affordable. Bon Appetit has a ton of different videos for this with sommelier Andre Houston Mack. He is hilarious. He's really good on camera and he does a lot of their videos. And the one that I recently watched that I thought was super interesting was about whiskeys. And he taste tested a bunch of whiskeys for under $50. And these are whiskeys that you probably have sitting in your whiskey cabinet, or they're like on every single shelf everywhere. He taste tests American, Canadian, Japanese, Irish, Scottish, and then the peanut butter whiskey. And he kind of gives you a little rating and review on each of the whiskeys, what he thinks about it. And it's super interesting because they're all under $50, so they're pretty affordable. And he gives you his, like, true, honest opinion on the flavor, what it can be used for. Is this a mixer? Is this a sipper? That kind of thing. And then gives you the history of the whiskey. So, like, for example, scotch can only be made in Scotland. Like, they, Scotland regulated that, that scotch, pure scotch can only be made in Scotland with water that comes from Scotland. And Japan wasn't making whiskey yet, but wanted to get into the market and copied scotch and then kind of put their own twist on it. So it's super interesting. Highly recommend checking that video out. We'll have it linked in the show notes, but let me know what you guys questions. What do you guys think about that? One thing I want to promise everyone before I jump in on Bon Appetit, because it is awesome, is what we just sort of glossed over with the history of scotch and Japan and everything like that, things like that will bring to future episodes. So make sure subscribe, check out uh, subsequent episodes of the podcast. We're going to bring topics like that to teach you kind of about the alcohol industry, but yes, Bon Appetit. Awesome. I watched one recently on wine. He tasted a bunch of cheaper wines and it was great because it was wines from regions all over the world 
and he tastes them and he'd give you a rating and he rated them with emojis, which was really cool. And so he'd taste one and he'd sip it, say, hmm, that's good, or it's better than I expected. Or one he spit out and said, I would never drink this wine, don't buy it. But then it got to 19 Crimes, the Snoop Dogg edition, and he tasted it and it just kind of went to the next wine. So I don't know yeah. if he just didn't like it and didn't they... want to insult the D-O-double-G. Or what? Because he just moved right on, right off of it. So interesting. Yeah. Good appetit. Awesome channel. Absolutely check it out. I have never watched it. So sounds like that's something that I'm going to be watching here shortly. Yeah. Well, one thing that was interesting is he does all of these episodes on there. And I had no idea that sommeliers are not just for wine. Therefore, they're in charge of any liquid beverage that's in served in the restaurant. They're also cigar experts. When you're a master sommelier, if if you're a, a true master sommelier, now I think there's only a couple hundred of those in the world, but if you are one of those, you are an expert in wine, every alcoholic beverage in the restaurant, you're a master of serving and guiding people through a menu, and you're a master of cigars, which I thought was very interesting. So- Work with me here because I'm not uh, very familiar with this term sommelier. I'm assuming <laughs> they work in a restaurant. <laughs> they do sometimes, All right. um, but really they're just experts and mostly wine is what they're known for. So they know all the regions, the wineries, the types of grapes that make good wine, how long different uh, wines should age and have been aged and what they'll taste like in the notes and all kinds of stuff like that. They're experts and can tell you basically by the taste or even smell of a wine, all that information, which is super, super impressive. If, if anyone, Ray, you included, is looking for a documentary, uh, <laughs> there is a documentary called Sommelier. And it's I called can... Som. That's right. It's called <laughs> Som. There's another one called Sommelier that we haven't watched. Som is the one I'm thinking of. We'll put in the show notes which streaming service it's on because I don't remember. But Prime. It fought <laughs> Prime. Okay. See, this is why she's here. Uh, <laughs> we'll put that in the show notes because you should watch it. It follows these people through their education of becoming master sommeliers. And you learn a it's, ton about this. It's thing. intense. Mm -hmm. Like they live, they live apart from their spouses. They live together. They study 24 seven. They can like sniff and taste a, wine, a glass of wine like this with no label or anything and literally tell you the region that it came from, the year that it was made, like all these things it's so interesting so if you're into the wine sector highly recommend yeah checking that out that's a good one for a lot of like information and it's also interesting because it kind of gives you that reality drama of like who became a master sommelier and who has to do it all over again and sometimes it takes years for these people to pass these tests and just year after year them studying and it's it's wild it it's is. a wild life it's insane well, folks, that's this week's podcast. We thank you for tuning in. Again, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Hit the bell notification so that you get notified when we put out a new episode. If you're listening on some other medium like Spodcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of the other podcast platforms, yikes. Um, then give us a subscribe there because we're going to be putting these out every single week and we want to see all of our social drinkers fam there with us. So we appreciate you being here. Absolutely. It's been a blast. I'm looking yes. forward to recording the next one. Yeah. Episode gonna... one in the books. Episode one in the books. And now we do a shoey. <laughs> now we do a shoey to celebrate. Let me kick off. Let me kick off my shoe real quick. No. All right. Peace, folks. All right. Bye, guys. Later.